In this video we're going to talk about how to edit an existing design. So the first thing that I'll do is hit O on the keyboard to open by number and type in 3603 and hit enter to open up this floral design. So with this particular design what we want to do is erase these top parts here, this bud and then these parts that uh, come up because it's too big for where we want it to go. First things first, I'm actually going to make a copy of this, so I'll select it all, drag it over to the right, I'm going to hold control and right click while I do that just so that it stays in line. Not that it really matters, but that's okay. So I'm just making a copy because I want to mess with this one here and um, do some other things with that one later on. So I'll hold Shift F2 and that will zoom to my selection, or we can come up here and say um, actually not there, I guess we'd have to go, anyway, Shift F2. Okay, so there's a few different ways of doing this, and that's why I wanted to show multiple different ways. Just because depending on what you're doing, some work better than others. One way is to use the virtual segment delete. The third tool down on the in the toolbox is the third tool down in the flyout. And the way that virtual segment delete works is if you click on a subpath, so a subpath is any path which is part of another uh, larger path. And if we look at this, it says that we've only got a curve on layer one. This curve is actually made up of a bunch of subpaths. And everywhere we've got one of these white nodes, that shows that that is its own path. So you can see how many different paths, there are, sub paths there actually are in this combined object. So one thing that we can do is break apart the combined object. If we look up here at the property bar, there is a break apart option. And the reason that the break apart option shows up is because it's combined. So if I break that apart, you'll see that there's no longer a break apart option because it's already broken apart. So instead it gives you new, different options for combining it back together or over here there's grouping. Grouping and combining are different, but those will be for a different video. So if we break everything apart, what it does is it separates all those subpaths into their own paths that are no longer combined together. So I would click on the white out here and that will um, make it so that my selection is cleared. And now I can just click on each of these individual paths and hit delete on my keyboard and that will go ahead and delete them. So each and every one of these, we can hit delete. You can also um, multi-select by holding shift while you click on things. So we could just hold shift while we're clicking. That will add things to the selection. Uh, so you can see that we've now got the inside part the way that we want it to be. However, the black part, because that was separated, is not how we want it to be. So there's a couple different things that we can do there. The shape tool is what you use for adjusting and modifying nodes. So if I click on that design first, then we'll be able to see the nodes that make it up. You can drag around nodes like this, or you can click on one node and hold shift and click on another node and it will select all of the nodes in between those two clicks. So then I can hit delete on the keyboard and that will delete all those uh, interior nodes there. If I click back on the line or the curve and get this black dot here, we can come up to convert to line or hit one on the keyboard and that will then just convert that to a line so that it's easier to mess with. And from there we can edit this curve as much as we want. So double clicking on a line will add a node. So I can double click there, and double click here and bring that down double click again, bring this up. So what I'm doing is I'm just adjusting the black outline to match the existing inside line here. And this is probably a bit more tedious than it needs to be. Um, there are better ways of going about creating an outline, but I wanted to show at least how this can be done in case you need to do it this way. So I've got all of those created. Now I can click and drag a box around those. So that marquee selects all of those inside that box. And I can easily turn them all to curves up here, or just hit two on the keyboard. 
and that will change all the lines to curves which means that now if I click on a node it will show me these um, these handles where I can bend or if I click on the curve itself I can just click and drag and that way I can bend it around and, and move it where I want it to be depending on where you grab along the line is where it's going to bend so if I click further up closer to that node it'll bend where I'm grabbing it so if I want it to be pretty even I grab in the middle I also have snapping on if we come up to snap you'll see I've got guidelines objects and page as snap points so as I was pulling this it was trying to snap and you can see edge midpoint there are different things that you can snap to um, new to CorelDRAW 2018 is if you want to adjust something uh, and your snapping is on but maybe it's getting in your way you can just hold the Q button on the keyboard and it will temporarily disable snapping while you're holding Q which is a much requested feature and they added it to 2018 so I'm really excited about that you used to only be able to do it with a with a hack but now they have added it as a standard feature which is really nice nodes you can add nodes by d double clicking on a line you can also delete a node by double clicking on the node so that's what I did there to clean that up so it's not perfect um, but it's pretty close so right here you can see how it's snapping I don't really want it to snap so I'm gonna hold Q so that I've got greater control of moving it to where I want it to go so that's one way of going about it um, the inside the veins you can see that the veins are now missing and that's because they're they're already there or they still are there I'll hold shift F2 again to zoom back here um, but if I hit V on the keyboard you'll see in the wireframe view that they're already there but the reason that you don't see them is because they're actually the same color as what they're on top of so that's why you don't see them in, unless you have them selected um, in order to get all those back you need to recombine the uh, these to the flower um, I just did that manually holding shift to select both of those and then hit combine but there's a quicker way to do that and that is just to grab all of this and hit fill grayscale or F on the keyboard and that will automatically take all of these inside pieces and combine them together and that way your veins will now show back up um, looking at this my lines are actually a little bit thicker so I don't know that I would want to keep this um, so that's why I will show you another way to get this outline and we may or may not want uh, to mess with the rest of the design. The rest of the design is actually already fine so I probably won't erase this black line. Um, instead what I'll do is I'll take this and we'll just break it back apart again and we've got this piece now that is separated all by itself and what we'll do is we'll contour to the outside to create the outline. You can use the contour tool which is over here to do that if you want but I've got a quick button up here, the frosted outline button, that'll do the same thing. And it's already set for a 0.09 or whatever uh, value you have selected. So if I just hit the frosted outline button, what it's going to do is it's going to make an outline around my design for me. So if I hit V again to go to wireframe, the one that I had created before, I can go ahead and select all those nodes and just delete them. Double click here and drag that down so that it's below everything else and maybe I'll just pull this in as well um, and so this this new outline that we've created what we can do is we can take that one hold down shift select the existing outline and then come up here to weld or just hit W on the keyboard and that will then weld um, our new outline to our old one which then gives us a much more consistent outline here compared to the one that I had drawn myself and it's much faster that way than the node editing so all I have to do is just come in here and clean this up a little bit I find when you contour things it usually adds more nodes than you need um, so I will typically delete some of these myself I will also most of the time come over to the shape tool and double click on it so that it will select all of the nodes and then I'll come up here to curve smoothness and type in 10 and hit enter and that will then smooth it um, quite a bit to where it's got the least amount of nodes possible I also like to have my nodes as cusps so I will usually come up here and cusp all the nodes at the same time since I've already got them selected 
Um, and that way I can edit them the way that I want to. So there's two different ways that I showed you as to how to recreate that um, that piece. And then we'll just select it again and hit F on the keyboard to uh, redo all those all the combining of the inside objects. Okay, so that was one way is to take your piece, break it apart, and erase them all at the same time. A faster possible way would be to use the virtual segment delete tool. What virtual segment delete does is if you click on a subpath, it will actually erase that path until it comes to an intersection. If that path doesn't intersect with anything, it's going to end up um, erasing the whole thing. And you can either click on each of those or you can click and drag a box and anything touching that box ends up getting deleted. Um, I could even, I'll show you how this works, if I do it on the outside, it will delete that as well. So undoing that a little bit, if I wanted to, I could just click and drag and let go, and that will delete all of that stuff at once. And then it, we're just left with our inside pieces that we want to keep. And then we'd come up here to the frosted outline button and hit that in order to get our outline back again. The thing with the frosted outline button is that it's going 0 0.09 inches um, around and so the insides of these little parts here are actually um, getting some interior pieces. If I move this black part away you'll see how it's got those interior um, interior pieces there. So I'll undo with control Z and if you compare this one to this one over here you'll see that there's actually just uh, it's all filled in with black. So we can get that same effect if we click on this and we break it apart so that we now have those other pieces separated and since all 11 objects here are selected we can hold shift on the keyboard and click on just the outline and what that does is it removes the outline from our selection so now we're down to 10 objects and it ends up being just the 10 interior objects so I will hit delete on the keyboard and now all of those are gone so it's pretty easy to get rid of all those interior pieces um, once again, I'll double click my shape tool, come over here and smooth that by 10. Uh, what that did was it reduced from 205 nodes to 112 nodes. It just cleaned it up a little bit. I also like to cusp my nodes. And a lot of times I'll go ahead and convert them all to curves at the same time too, just so that I can manipulate them easier. So I can bring this down, for instance, and curve this around so that it's not so sharp. And those edits I would just manually do by hand just to make it look a little bit nicer and, and not come to such a, uh, a harsh or long angle there. So those are two different ways um, for going about and doing the same exact thing. I'm going to show one more way to do this and um, I've now deleted my thing, so I'll go ahead and hit open by number again. This time I'll import and type in 3603 again. That way it'll import back into our design. And I'll just drag that down a little bit, holding control so that it stays in line. Not that that's super important, but it's just a habit I've been in. Okay, so another way to delete these is the eraser tool. I've got an eraser tool here. Now, in the past, the eraser tool, you have you had to have something selected. I'm holding shift on my keyboard, and I've got my uh, left mouse button down, and I'm moving my mouse up to make it bigger or down to make it smaller. So holding shift while you click and drag your mouse will actually interactively uh, resize the nib of your eraser. And in the past, you used to have some you used to have to have something selected, but that's not the case anymore. You can actually just start erasing now and it will re erase whatever it touches. So if I come in here like that, I've now erased both of those pieces. And if I make my eraser smaller, I can come in here and just start erasing like this. Come up and erase this way. Come up and erase this way. And so if I'm just using my mouse, if I was using a tablet, it might be a little bit easier. Um, but you can see how that works that you can just erase whatever you want to. If you do have something selected, for instance, if I select this inside portion, I'm going to ungroup this. Since I imported it, it comes in as a group. 
but I'll go ahead and grab um, this piece here and if I started erasing now the black part it's not going to erase the black part because all I've got selected is the this inside uh, portion so I can actually erase this part but it would not erase the black and that's because I don't have it selected so depending on whether you have something selected or not it will erase everything or only the selected object that's really not all that pretty um, but it is kinda quick and dirty and, and easy to do so if you were in a hurry or you know needed to to do something quickly you can certainly do that selecting all these nodes I just drag around them I usually will select any nodes between two that I don't need and end up deleting those ones so you can go ahead and do that and double click here hit C to cusp it and then just bend that around do the same thing here double click hit C to cusp that way I can pull it around what happens when you cusp is it makes it so that if I click on a handle on one side it is independent of the handle on the other side whereas this is actually a smooth node and so it's going to keep it uh, smooth by adjusting both sides of the node but if I hit C on the keyboard it changes and you can see how it changed from a circle to a square so the cusp nodes are shown as squares as opposed to circles this one's a circle so if I hit C I can cusp it and that way I can bend both of those uh, independent of each other. So I normally find if I hit Control A on the keyboard that selects all my nodes and then I can just cusp them all at the same time because I like to work with cusped nodes most often. So that's typically how I'll work. But there we've got a couple different ways in order to accomplish the same task. Once again the reason that I show you more than one way is because oftentimes I will do it in more than one way just depending on what's going to be easiest and fastest or maybe even just the mood that I'm in sometimes I get bored of doing the same thing over and over again so um, it's nice to be able to have multiple options as to how I want to do things so that's really not all that pretty but it will show you anyhow what that looks like and most of the time I'm just zooming in and out with my mouse wheel so if you see me going in and out that's me clicking on my mouse wheel so hopefully that's helped um, I know this is kind of a lengthy video for doing something simple but hopefully that explains how to um, edit an existing design in order to get pieces out of it if I wanted to draw new pieces the same thing kind of applies um, that if I were to draw a new piece and this will be pretty rough but if I were to just draw a new piece like this make sure that it's closed I can shift select the other interior pieces and combine those together and that way it becomes part of this combination and then I, I could uh, either delete the existing outline and then redo my frosted outline or I could also add an outline and then weld them together but you can see how adding in pieces that way is, is not all that bad either so depending on what you want to do um, there are also a lot of other neat um, drawing tools and stuff but that'll be saved for another video so this one I just wanted to show breaking apart combining using virtual segment delete and the eraser tool